Okay, we're going to McHenry, Maryland for a community concert and we will be arriving at 6 o'clock and you'll just have to move in as quickly as possible and prepare for the show. Rick Moore, I'm the tour manager and we have 34 students this year in the ensemble. We drive everywhere we go because all of our equipment is also on the bus. Uh, we cannot use the bathroom. Uh, we use that for instrument storage, so we're kind of... Uh, out on that one, we have to reserve our uh, rest stops. Hello, my name is Boban. Hello, my name is Milos. And, and we, we are Temurizas! The technology nowadays, computers, it's like, I don't like working in my dorm except I have nice scenery to look at every once in a while. Well, I mean, I'm kind of like the troop library and I probably have like 120-ish DVDs. <laughs> I'm all on the iPod, so. <laughs> but between the two of us, we have a good probably all 300 all movies, yeah, so. That's well, you know, when we're not doing schoolwork or sleeping, you know, for, you know, sometimes we'll even get the instruments out and play on the bus. Usually we have time. We get to show sites for five hours beforehand so that we have time for makeup, hair, setting up, all of that. So it's rare that we're this time crunched. Yeah, we don't want to go on stage without makeup. That'll just scare some people. Today, it's a, it'll be a very tight time for us because we are getting a little bit late to the show site. So pretty much everybody will try to set up as fast as possible and everybody will do their job as fast as possible. The bus is an all custom because typically when you ride on a tour bus, the seats across from each other are staggered so you're not sitting right next to someone. And we had ours put directly across from each other and made benches for in between in the aisle so that they can sleep on them. And so our students, when we travel overnight, well, two will sleep on the seats and two will sleep on the floor in front of the seats. Well, when I was at Tambritson, uh, oftentimes we pushed the bus instead of rode in it. My name is Paul Stafura. I'm the managing director for the Duquesne University okay. Tambritsons. So I started out as a tour manager, and a tour manager has to drive the bus. So as I went through my responsibilities, I never dropped that. And to this day, I still drive from time to time. The bus has always been a big part of a Tambritson life. It started off with a 16-cylinder Cadillac and, uh, and a trailer that oftentimes accompanied that, that uh, that 16-cylinder Cadillac, uh, sometimes it veered off in its own way. And as the decades went on, that mode of transportation improved. Our buses improved, and now, to the, today, we have a wonderful vehicle. During the year, the Tambritsons rehearse only on a Friday, uh, and that is from usually 5.15 in the afternoon till 10 o'clock at night. And the reason for it is, during the week, they are students. So they wear two hats. First they're a student, then all of a sudden they're a performer. They're an artist. comes from the name of the instrument we play, which in Croatia, it's called tambura. One who plays a tambura, or one who plays a tamburitsa, is a tamburitsa.
big a draw as the Tammies are at the box office, they still... There's another nickname for the Tambritsons, and that's, um, they're called the Tammies. And I believe it just came a long time ago, probably um, at Duquesne University. And um, you, you wanted to have a, a kind of a, a, a nice nickname that was dear to everybody. Tammy seemed to be a, a warm, uh, affectionate word. Uh, we use it a lot. I'm surprised that so many people know that word and will say, oh, the Tammies are in town. They've been in existence for over 75 years now. They have a twofold mission. One is to make aware and perpetuate the cultures of Eastern Europe and their neighbors, as well as offer scholarships to deserving young students. Their mission is to bring together different peoples of the world through their artistry on stage. To show that people can be different in their uh, opinions, in their cultures, in their beliefs, but yet they can come together on one stage and be a beautiful artistic nation. It's one of the secrets of the Tambritsons, that people want to come back to see the performances over and over because they say, I wonder what the Tambritsons are going to do this year. You are in what we call TAB, or the Tambritsons Administration Building, owned and operated by Duquesne University. It used to be owned and operated by the Warner Brothers Corporation. And this particular building was a film distribution center. So the vaults that are in this hallway now that hold costumes used to hold films. Oh, we have about $1.5 million worth of costumes. Those are the costumes that are in storage in the vaults. That's not including the costumes that we have on the bus ready to go for any given weekend. Susan Stafura is currently in charge of costuming and wardrobe. Uh, she takes care of all of the costumes that are seen on the Tambritson stage as well as the special collection costumes. In addition to that, I arrange some music and teach it at the training camp and throughout the year I work on music and the singing as well and any other little project that we need to have worked on. <laughs> Well, we have quite a nice inventory of costumes. They are museum quality, and they're all identified on a database, and we can send them out to any reputable museum anywhere in the United States. We have approximately 200 instruments all about our, uh, our facility here. Some are very old. Uh, they'll, they'll date back to the early 1900s. These are all Tambritz instruments that we have that were donated from us. And as you can see, they're all different shapes and sizes. So the smaller instruments, we call them creams. The larger instruments are brachas. And down here, we have some of the larger instruments that are cellos and bugadias. Well, uh, anybody who has been in the Tambritsons has his space on the wall. And uh, it goes all the way from the beginning of 1937 with our first graduates all the way up to the present day. George Verbanek, he is our uh, first graduate from the Tampersons and again one of our loyal alumni who would come to every show in the Akron, Cleveland area. 1937, the first year, to 41. That's a long time ago. I'm 98. Family and I were in Caneywood, and they had 12 girls, 13 girls, doing the colo, the circle dance, and they couldn't get started. So I, I ran up and started them. And just then, at that time, Pop Pierce, that took over the, being an advisor for the, for the Tammies was there. Oh, he said, we, now we have something here. We're going to have him do that colo when we go and perform in the country. So that started that way. And here I, I was a featured dancer 
of that because of jumping on the stage. Isn't that something? The Tamburitzes began here at Duquesne University in 1937. And it was started by a gentleman by the name of Dr. A. Lester Pierce. He had a very big interest and love for this instrument called the Tamburitz instrument. And he wanted to promote it. He found another person by the name of Matt Gouget who helped him in directing the first group called the Tamburitzes. Oh, I was so proud that I was in it and had a, such a good time. I have some information for you. No, we're not late, we're right on time. The first, the first half we are starting with Macedonian. Listen, listen, there, there it is a gymnasium with Marley on the floor with pipe and drape. And Our so students not only learn how to perform, but they learn how to adjust. We perform on a gymnasium stage, and we've also performed at Kennedy Center for the Performing Arts. In the international audience, two very special dignitaries. Both their excellencies here to enjoy the folk music and dance of Eastern Europe as only the Tammies can perform it. For this is a joyous and an expert performance of heritages both ambassadors would especially understand and appreciate. In the 40s, it started to take off, and then what happened was World War II. When World War II hit, of course, all of the, the men in the orchestra had to go off to war. And at that time, it was very difficult to keep the ensemble going. However, we did do it with an all-girls orchestra. After World War II, of course, all of the boys came home. Like anything else after World War II, um, economy picked up. Uh, interest in the Tambritsons also picked up, and we did a lot more touring at that time. We made our first international tour over in, uh, in former Yugoslavia in 1950, and again in 1952. Now, here is the director of the Tambritsons, Walter W. Kohler. Thank you, Mr. Hughes. It gives me a great deal of pleasure to present our Duquesne University Tamaritans. We take our name. At the end of 1952, Walter Kolar took reins at that time. With Walter, he directed at a time when there was a lot of interest in touring. In addition to Walter, in the, in the 50s and 60s, all the way up to, to the 80s, Steve Kovachev was his loyal assistant. Steve Kovachev may be one of the nation's few bus drivers to hold a master's degree in education. He was a Tamboritzen as a student, stayed on to become assistant director, and is now treasurer of the Tamboritzen Corporation and tour manager. My years in the Tamboritzens, which uh, started in 1967, to 1971 was really a glamorous time. It was a time where travel to Europe was happening almost every year. In the 1970s, there was a Tambritson Cultural Center that we had. We had a Tambritson National Folk Arts Center uh, wanting to be developed, as well as we had the graduate program. Walter was the director of all of that, and what he did was he hired a wonderful director for the Tambritsons. His name was Nick Jordanoff. And that is Nicholas Jordanoff, the Tammy's director. Several times here, Jordanoff... And Nick came in with um, a unique way of running the ensemble. Um, he had new ideas, new concepts. Instead of just performing for ethnic uh, neighborhoods and ethnic presenters, we went into the arts world. 
and Nick felt very comfortable with that. He felt that that was the way for the Tamperitzes to get even more exposure and appreciation for the folk arts. Our next decade is the 80s, and that's where uh, myself, uh, I appeared as the um, assistant director, then director for the Tamberitsons. And if it wasn't for the people that were before me, I believe the Tamberitsons would not be um, as far as they are today. <laughs> Other than my job at, at home, uh, it's probably the best job I got. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I really enjoy them. They're a good bunch of kids. Love them like my own. I've been all over the country with them. Uh, we go to the West Coast uh, every year. The Tambritsons travel from coast to coast. So it's, a, it's difficult, it's a major responsibility, but they're able to handle it. And the reason why is they are academically sound. They come to us with focused, they know their responsibilities, they know their priorities. It can be difficult, you know, to stay on top of everything with school and performances on the weekends, always traveling and everything. But you know, one thing Tammy's helps you with a lot is time management. You can practice all of that right here, right now. Tambritson Camp begins mid-July and goes all the way through until early August and right after that we go on tour. Have yourself checked with somebody else, make sure it's on straight. Okay, we'll go number by number, see you at 3.30. And back in the good old days, Matt Gouget had an uncle that lived across the lake from the inhabitants in a little town called Lake Nebagaman, Wisconsin. Lake Nebagaman is about 25 miles east of Superior, Wisconsin. So you're up in the northwest corner of Wisconsin. Why do we go all the way there? to get away from everybody, no distraction, to concentrate on one thing, and that was the show. This is part of training, too, the busy part. The beautiful costumes must fit, all of them. And this year's new Tammies, the freshmen, must learn to change into as many as 15 different costumes quickly. And then now we're at Washington Jefferson College, uh, which provides us what I think is the best we've ever had. We've, Hands up. we've been there for the past five years. We celebrated our fifth, uh, fifth anniversary there. Camp is a unique experience. 14 hours a day for 25 days in a row, and you don't do that anywhere else. Learning all the music and memorizing all the music and just adjusting to the atmosphere. So I think once you, once you figured out how to do it, it was fine. And it turned out to be a lot of fun, but it's different. Camp is a learning process. Students learn that they have to compete. Nothing is given to them. They also learn that they do have limitations. They also learn that they have creative talents that they thought they never had and would be playing musical instruments or doing things that they never thought they would ever do in their life. We're about a minute away, so get ready and get your stuff ready so we can make this quickly. 40 minutes until meeting! Everyone has their own uh, jobs that we do, whether it's getting out extras, like props that we use for um, dances, instruments, people have jobs to put them in certain places. My 16-piece costume. Yes, everything is in the wrong order, but here's my vest. Beautiful Slovenian vest. I think it's two minutes till showtime, and uh, that means it's close. Go, press the musicians, go. We don't go. Are we going? I don't know. Are we walking up? Yeah. Okay. Showtime. The Pennsylvania Performing Arts on Tour. This project is partially supported by... <laughs> Friendships in the Tambritsons last forever. Decades can go by. And when you have a wonderful celebration like the 75th anniversary that we had last year, people were coming in who were 
40, 50, 60, 70, 80 years of age, and all it took was a half an hour to meet their friends, and they turn into 18-year-olds. You do. You look marvelous, though. You, you look marvelous. You look marvelous. You're very marvelous. businessy. It's interesting to see the different ages. It's nice to see everybody else that's been in the group before us. Tam Britons was like a, a fraternity on steroids. And every time you start a conversation <laughs> with someone you haven't seen in a while, you see six other people in the background. Being in the Tammies has been a wonderful experience. It opened up a whole new world of travel and just meeting many wonderful friends. In fact, we're like a family. Nancy Zach Pavlik. I was in the Tammies from 58 to 62. And me, Dan Pavlik, in the group from 55 to 60. Oh, so many memories, my goodness. There's mine. Yes, where's our, where's our daughter, Pam? Aha! Uh -huh. The most beautiful girl that was ever in the Tamburus is beside her mother, right there in the corner. Pamela Pavlik, now Kubelik. There's yes. Chucky, there's our son-in-law. Chucky Kubelik. There you are, playing the accordion. Oh, here's the one our, father dear one. There's our metal famous song. thing again, but they they whited out there, did something to the yeah. <laughs> to the uh, ice cream cone. This is Father Dear, the one who was our moderator uh, during the years that we were in, who along with being a fantastic photographer. And he used to make us a packet of pictures, which were postcards that we yeah. could mail, mail home. home from Cam. We have several relatives in the Tammies. Uh, we are very, would you like me to just give our core <laughs> relatives or all the people by marriage or? The Dorfner family. Uh, not only did they come through the group and their wives, also now their children uh, are in the group and uh, it's made for a wonderful legacy. This is our 75th uh, anniversary. Some of us haven't seen each other for 15, 20 years. How many years? Dorfners and Tammies. Five, four, four, nine, four, four, five, four, 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 three, four, two, four. four. And Bill, four. <laughs> Did you do the math? No, no. 35. <laughs> well, he should because he was a math major. <laughs> My wife and I married uh, after we got out of the group, and we have seven children. Those children are all members of the Tamperson. And there are many others. We actually have. Uh, students who are coming in now who are third generation Tamboritsans. It's usually a pretty quick change, so I haven't been late yet, so <laughs> getting these socks off is sometimes a challenge, but you don't even think, you just do. Sometimes we'll have a meet and greet if uh, if we have time, and we can do it after the show. Did you guys do the show? Yeah. Well, I'm actually I'm a third generation Tamboritsan, so my grandparents were both in group, my parents were both in the group. Really? So I grew up doing this. I was in a bunch of junior groups, and then when I was a senior in high school, you audition. It's like a three or four month process. You do you have initial auditions, and then you get callbacks, and then interviews, and then if you make it through interviews, you're in the groups. 
after the show, people usually take, take a few minutes to catch their breath <laughs> and then um, immediately start packing up. So everybody goes back and does their same assigned jobs. So obviously you change into regular clothes, take your makeup off, hair, and then whatever additional stuff needs to get done. We can never take for granted that the Tambritsons can do what they're doing year after year after year. It's very costly for Duquesne University. Duquesne University has supported us all through our years and we want to have that support continue. However, it does need support from our alumni, from our friends, from people all across the United States. Well, tonight we're going home so we can take a shower and sleep in our beds tonight. But tomorrow morning we wake up and we're on our way to Allentown, Pennsylvania. So we'll do the same thing. We'll drive, except on the way to Allentown. In the end, we all love what we do. We are not, if, if we didn't love it, we couldn't be here. It's very difficult to be in this group if you, <laughs> if you really don't love what you do. And um, there is a nice scholarship that goes along with this as well. So we're all great students. <laughs> Okay, we'll pick you up at shortstop at 8 o'clock in the morning. Make sure you bring enough things for two shows in case we don't get back tomorrow. For the Tammies, the tour of Iron Curtain countries was more than a switch of continents. They did a new kind of show. The Department of State asked them to do an all-American show. One of its show-stopping numbers in Russia was the Charleston. Who works harder, the musicians or the dancers? I say that's a very difficult question because I know if I pick one or the other, uh, I will be uh, lambasted by this, uh, this interview. And it's one of those things like, you know, as a musician you want to feel like, oh, I do more work, but as a dancer they would feel like they do more work. Oh, <laughs> you're trying to get me in trouble. Buddy. I'm not going to make too many enemies. <laughs> say this gym is burning in here. I can't even imagine what dancers feel like right now. Clearly we work harder. I think both dancers, musicians, and singers all work very hard. I really do. So I'm sorry, I'm not going to pick who works harder. They both work very hard, but they work in different ways. Who works harder, dancers or musicians? Dancers! It's probably not fair because half of my musicians are down there already. The Duquesne University Tambritsons.